Heinemann Podcast is a production of Heinemann Publishing. Heinemann is a provider of resources written by real teachers for real classrooms. Heinemann values teachers as decision makers and students as curious learners. Discover the path to lifelong professional learning at Heinemann.com. Heinemann is dedicated to teachers. I'm Steph from Heinemann, and today we're bringing you a bonus episode with authors Sonia Sherry Paul and Dana Johansson. Their latest book, Breathing New Life into Book Clubs, is a one-stop resource for starting, improving, and troubleshooting your book clubs. From choosing books, best approaches for organization, and how to best utilize technology, Sonia and Dana cover it all. In this episode, Sonia and Dana chat with Brett Whitmarsh about the value of book clubs and how they can become a tool to disrupt the idea that our job and mission is to teach books, when really it should be to teach readers. Well, it's interesting. Oftentimes, we've heard teachers make comments such as, I would rather die than give up teaching the giver, or I would rather die than give up teaching, insert any text that's used by some teachers year after year after year. And what this signals to us is being mired in teaching texts versus readers this swearing of allegiance to teaching a book that you love rather than seeing a book as a model, a vehicle, a roadmap for making visible the the reading strategies that help students to become more proficient readers. But we really see that the tide is turning on this and that teachers more and more are understanding that it's not about the book, it's about the strategies that you want students to learn. And when we think about the the role of mini lessons when we're teaching our readers and the role of book clubs, we like to think about our favorite analogy, um, a soccer game. And in this comparison, the mini lessons provide students with opportunities to practice just like they would practice before their soccer games. And in the mini lessons, this gives students to practice the chance um, to try new reading strategies. Book clubs, on the other hand, offer a way for students to get in the game and be independent and work together as a team and to try out the strategies that they've been learning in practice. And we really feel like there needs to be more of an emphasis on getting kids into the game. And we believe that book clubs really provide this vehicle that Sonia was just talking about and that the teacher's mini lessons should be short and quick Um, with lots of opportunities for students to practice. And then teachers need to offer this, this great time for students to be in the game and be in book clubs. And, And when we think about focusing on teaching novels as opposed to teaching readers, students don't have the chance to, as Dana was just saying, get into the game. They're perpetually pinioned in practice, this lecture that they're receiving from the coach. So if you're never in the game, it looks like this. Let me show you how to play soccer without ever playing soccer. Let me show you how to read a book without you ever having a chance to read a book. And we really believe that every child can play the game. We believe <laughs> we believe in them. You know, when kids have choice and autonomy and opportunities to, you know, to play the game, if you will, then there is no bench. No kid yeah. is on the sidelines right. or perpetually in practice. And if we think about how many books students could read during the year if they weren't locked into three or four whole class novels where they're spending weeks sometimes, maybe even months reading just one book. And also just think about how often these these whole class novels that we sometimes swear allegiance to do not represent the children before us. And that is most troublesome, that these books aren't necessarily representative of their racial or cultural identities, of their interests. And we really appreciate the way that Disrupt Texts challenges us to consider not only counter narratives in our reading curriculums, but that books that feature diverse characters written by diverse authors can and should be the narratives used in our classrooms and just how much these books have to offer all kids. So book clubs are spaces where students get to read more and they have more access to texts that are reflective of them in their lives, texts that provide, as Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop says, mirrors and windows. 
Why are book clubs valuable and how can they help build spaces where students can talk about what they're hearing and observing in the world and learn deep listening skills as well, Sonia? So Dana and I really appreciate book clubs because they break this culture of isolationism in our classrooms where each student is on their own island navigating the world. In book clubs, kids come together to grapple with the challenges they face and the chaos of the world around them. We see book clubs as spaces where students get to listen to and explore multiple perspectives, that of the characters they read about and of each other. They might not always agree, yet, you know, they have access to ideas that they never would have considered before. And this raises a consciousness about issues in the world. When I think about this, I think about students who might come together to read a book like Yo Soy Muslim by Mark Gonzalez or Harbor Me by Jacqueline Woodson or Where Are You From by Jamile Saeed Mendez. And when students have opportunities to read books like this and come together to talk about them, they are developing critical literacy skills so that when they hear speech such as go back to where you come from, they will absolutely recognize that this is racist and they are better able to deconstruct this type of language and take action against it. And what we really want everyone to remember is that Book clubs are the students' clubs. They're not the teachers' clubs. And teachers need to step back, let go, take a, take a deep breath because that's the way it is in my classroom too, um, and, and let our students engage in authentic conversations. These are spaces where there are, are no rules or roles about talk. Um, we really want our students to get in there and to talk with each other. And educators can expect that these are going to be some messy spaces, right? Yeah, and not save um, the moment. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, where students are learning what it takes to work together, be responsible for the ideas they share, and to negotiate um, with each other so that the quieter and louder voices both feel valued. For example, I mean, we've had students who may take on the role as the listener during our whole class discussions. Mm -hmm. But then during book clubs, we see a different side. And these students are more comfortable and confident taking risks and engaging in discussions with peers in book club spaces. And this makes it possible for students to get to know one another intimately in ways that they couldn't if all the discussions were led by the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So some tips, we have some tips for how to nurture book club discussions. So we want to share those with you. One is one of our favorites uh, to have some practice discussions with shorter texts prior to having students dive in with their book clubs. So this could look like using a digital text, a poem, a short story, even a photo. I love using photos. These are great opportunities for students to practice talking with their peers in small groups about what they're seeing, what they're thinking about. And, and it's great to have these practice discussions before you launch book clubs. Also, we love giving our students some time to write their thoughts down oh, before yeah. they get together in their book clubs. Oh my God, yes. We find that even with, you know, three minutes, students can sit, jot down their thoughts. And then when they get to their book club time, they're ready to go yeah. <laughs> with the, everything that's yeah. on their mind. And what so. a valuable skill to just right. have. Yeah. Exactly. Just get into that habit. And I think that's pretty straightforward. There's a lot of teachers who are using post-its mm -hmm. and having encouraging students to jot. But sometimes we forget that yeah. and with all of the craze that we have to manage as teachers. And then it's like, oh, my gosh, OK, there's 15 minutes left to the period. Get into book clubs and go. <laughs> yeah. And then we're surprised when <laughs> when the club is, you know, having a hard yeah. time, you know, getting its footing. Right. And rather than, you know, assigning uh, a prompt that mm -hmm. students all have to respond to, we can just extend these open invitations, right? Exactly. We can 
extend invitations that really become an entry point for students and can encourage rich discussions, such as, you know, simply what's on your mind about this text. And we can also have silent chats in the classroom. And we recognize that this is an oxymoron. <laughs> <laughs> and we might be, ra- some, yeah. some of you might be raising some eyebrows Say on this. Say more about that. <laughs> yeah. But, but we promise you, it's so powerful and, and it really works. Sometimes the best way to get the discussion flowing is to ask students not to talk. However, we're not silencing their voices when mm-hmm. we do so. Instead, we're inviting them to express themselves in different ways, um, such as on index cards that they might jot down and pass around amongst themselves to get more responses and to be surprised by the responses they receive back. They could have a silent chat on a large poster paper or chart paper. And of course, they can even have a silent chat on a blog or a discussion board where their ideas are read in real time. And the purpose behind doing this is it gives all students an opportunity to reflect about what they're hearing Mm -hmm. as they read, gather their thoughts, and get into the conversation. Model book clubs is another tip that we want to share with educators. And fishbowling discussions can invite students to just sort of take note of the moves of another club and bring those moves back to their own. Teachers can set this up within their classroom where one club is in the fishbowl and students are are just sort of listening in and watching them have a discussion. Or they can reach out to a colleague who also teaches the same grade or maybe one grade above and arrange an in-school class trip, if you will, Mm -hmm. to bring students to watch another club in action in another classroom. And when we do this, students become researchers in this experience, thinking to themselves, what is this club doing that I'd like to do Mm -hmm. in my own? Yeah. You know, as a result of all of this, we believe that you'll see students that are more engaged in their discussions and that book clubs become spaces that students are just excited and dying to get to. Our thanks to Sonia and Dana for their time today. You can keep up with their work on Twitter at LitLearnAct and learn more about their book at blog.heineman.com. As always, thanks for listening.